Next, a favourite dish you might associate more with 70s dinner parties and pub menus than posh fish restaurants. And I'm talking about scampi. But is it always quite what it's supposed to be? True aficionados know that the real wholetail scampi is delicious. And they'd probably know what fish it comes from as well. But that isn't what you might typically buy in the shops or indeed be given in a restaurant. As became clear when we were contacted by one Rip of Britain viewer, left very disappointed by the so-called scampi that she was served up when eating out. It's been a staple of pub menus for donkey's years. But while scampi is hugely popular with sales of more than 40 million pounds a year, it's also a bit of an enigma. Would you know, for example, where it comes from? What do you think scampi is? It's basically a prawn, isn't it? It's a big prawn. A big Sorry. prawn. Virtually, yeah. Yeah. Is it some kind of shrimp? It's like thing? a large shrimp. I always thought it was a sort of prawn. Some kind prawn. of prawn. Well, I can tell you that scampi comes from a shellfish uh, related to the lobster family, langoustine. Actually, langoustine tails, to be precise about it. But, you know, whatever you want to call them, when they're breaded, fried, served up with chips, peas, and a good old dollop of tartar sauce, trust me, they taste really, really good. Fellow scampi fan and all-round culinary enthusiast Christine Thomas couldn't agree more. I love scampi because it has lovely texture, a, t a lovely taste, and uh, you can put it into so many dif different dishes. But as Christine discovered to her horror, what passes as scampi in some pubs and restaurants isn't always the lovely languistine it should be. I saw this little restaurant and I thought, oh, I'll pop in there for lunch. I started eating the scampi and I thought, this is really strange. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Um, can you show me what nice or best scampi you have today? As a former cookery lecturer, Christine knows exactly what should have been inside those breadcrumbs, but the quality of what she'd been served instead rather stuck in her throat. The texture was horrible. It was, it was tough. It was solid. Uh, there was no flaking. There was no, no sign of any fish at all. And when you bit into it, it stuck to the palate. So I, I've never had scampi again. The restaurant apologised and gave Christine a free coffee. But after her encounter with the suspect scampi, she wrote to us and asked us to look into whether something fishy was going on. How's that for you? Thank you very That's much. Lovely. Thank you. So we called in Chef Kamud Gandhi to help shed some light on the matter. When you order scampi on the menu, you should be getting a langoustine and you should be looking for around about 65 to 75 percent langoustine. So a good quality scampi should be about this length in size uh, and about this depth and thickness. So that's what you should be getting inside that bed of coating. Well, now for what you may sometimes get instead. So in the lower quality scampi, they may not be using langoustine. They may be using just scraps of fish, processed fish. Um, and so you could have as little as 20%, anything ranging from 20 to 40%. Uh, and anything really less than 40% really is a very poor scampi. <laughs> To find out more, Christine's joining Cummard for a cookery lesson, but this time as a student rather than teacher. We're going to make the lower grade scampi. I'm going to use a cheap white fish. We're going to mix that with some langoustine. Now this fish you could typically buy a couple of pounds a kilo or something. This is haddock, but some scampi, including varieties widely available in supermarkets, is made with other minced white fish, such as cod, pollock, and even bassa which is a kind of catfish. So let's get this into the food processor. Now, they're like, so I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of oats. Next, Cummard uses another common trick, adding potato flour and rice flour to bulk the fish up at little extra cost. If you're buying a 250 gram pack of scampi, actually the scampi will probably be about 25 grams and everything else. Uh, the rest of the weight is made up of all these kind of ingredients. Let's give this a bind, a blitz.
So we just want it to be to the consistency where you would be able to really form a shape with it. And then we would be able to quite simply roll that into plain flour, coat it in egg, and then roll it in breadcrumbs, and then fry it. And here's how to make the proper scampi, pure whole tail languistine. Now I'm just going to take the shell off, and so I'm going to cut through the structure of it. You can see that this is quite a laborious job, isn't yeah. it? So this is and where... very time-consuming. Yeah, so this is where the money is, because somebody has to remove all these. What we're going to do next is we're actually going to use our cleaned langoustines, and now I'm actually going to dredge them in some plain flour first, coat them in egg, and then dredge them through the breadcrumbs as well. <laughs> Papa restaurant menus don't always tell you what type of scampi you're getting, but if you're buying it from a supermarket to cook at home, simply turning over the packet should shed some light on what's really inside. And when we did that with scampi on sale in British supermarkets, this is what we found. We looked at all the scampi products we could find offered online by the four biggest supermarkets, 22 items in total. On the day we looked, the highest percentage of scampi we found was 45% which was the amount in three separate products. That's Tesco's whole tail breaded scampi, Asda's breaded whole tail scampi, and Asda's big saver breaded whole tail scampi. And these were the three products containing the lowest percentage of scampi, one from Sainsbury's, one from Young Seafood, and one from Whitby Seafoods. They were also amongst only four products we found which listed other fish in their ingredients as well. So these Sainsbury's basic breaded scampi fish bites contained 16% scampi, but also 12% minced Alaska pollock and 4% bassa. These kilti scampi bites made by Young Seafood had 16.5% scampi, but also 16% of what was simply described as minced whitefish. And finally, these Whitby breaded scampi bites, which contained the lowest percentage of langoustine out of all the items we looked at, just 7%. Instead, it had 30% minced cod. Whitby Seafoods also produce the only other scampi product we saw which contained other fish as well. This Whitby Seashore breaded scampi which had 20% langoustine but also 17% minced cod. But while you might not have realised how little scampi or langoustine is in some of these products, none of them is actually breaking any rules. Regulations state that product labelling should not be misleading. So, for example, if it says whole tail scampi on the outside of the packet, it should definitely be whole tail scampi on the inside. However, if it only says scampi, well, I'm afraid there are no regulations to control exactly how much languacine should be in it. There is, however, an easy way to spot the products that typically contain the least amount. As a rule of thumb, if what you picked up in the supermarket has the word bites in its name, it's probably made with other fish as well as scampi. But without knowing that, and if you were just looking at the packet, how much langoustine might you expect to find inside? We went to a cafe in Whitstable to find out. What I want you to do is have a look at the package yep. and tell me what percentage of langoustine you think would be in this. Okay. Maybe 80%? Well, in actual fact, it's 37. 37%. Okay, this one, you haven't got a picture in the front or anything, mm -hmm. but these are scampi bites. I've well, actually got cod and scampi, there, so I'm assuming a bit less. 30%? That's a good conclusion, actually, because they do say cod on the front as well. It's only 7%. 7. 7% 7. 7 okay. languacine. Are you quite shocked at the percentages here? It is surprising. You've got to take into account, obviously, they've got breadcrumbs on them and all, so it's not going to be 100% of the fish, but I would have thought it would be a lot more than the percentages that are actually in there. We got in touch with the manufacturers of the products we found containing the least scampi, Sainsbury's, Young Seafoods and Whitby Seafoods. All of them stress that these particular products are just part of a wider range and developed in response to consumer demand for lower-priced alternatives to wholetail scampi. Sainsbury said not only are its basic scampi fish bites offered with quality and value in mind, but that the product is unique in stating clearly, not just in the bag, but in the name of the product itself, that it also contains fish. Similarly, Young Seafood told us that it uses the name Scampi Bites to reflect that this particular product isn't whole scampi. 
And Whitby Seafoods, whose scampi bites contain 7% scampi and whose seashore scampi is mixed with cod, said that while it offers a range of products to meet customers' differing price points, its most popular product is in fact its whole scampi. Each of the three companies also made it very clear that all their products are labelled clearly and in accordance with regulations. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, the two types of scampi Kamat has made are ready for Christine to taste. First up, it's the whole tail scampi. Actually, oh, that looks beautiful. You see how so all the layers see the of, the of the fish. Yes. You can actually you see, see the, the pink. pink. Yes. yes. Absolutely delicious. Really, really lovely. And now for the cheaper scampi, which has about 10% langoustine and some added whitefish. Scampi made oh out of... Oh, my gosh! That's just like I saw in the restaurant. Look, it's a sort of mush. Do I really have to taste that? Oh, dear. My gosh, it's like eating cotton wool. <laughs> Not comparable. Just like I had in that restaurant, and I was absolutely shocked. There's no texture of fish mm. at all. It's mm. just a, mm. a sort of glutinous mush. Mm. So how can Christine and the rest of us be sure what type of scampi we're getting when we eat out? Now, if you go to the supermarket, you can actually examine the packaging and see if you are getting langoustine. But if you go to a restaurant or a cafe, um, you can't. So what would I do? When you see it on the menu, just ask them about where it's come from, whether it's langoustine, uh, and then, you know, if you, if you order it and it's not how it should taste, then you're well within your rights to ask them to give you something else. So there you have it. Once again, tasting some top quality scampi. Christine is determined that she won't get caught out ever again in the same way. I really felt strongly about um, people being sold scampi, and it isn't scampi, so I'm really happy many people will be made aware and they will be more careful and checking what they're really eating. Mm -hmm.